learning to sell. But before we jump into that, just a quick housekeeping rules. All the books are below, free updates, and some totally provocative hustling insights. Let's jump into it. Why should you learn how to sell? That's a big question, but you should learn how to sell because selling, marketing, all of these things impact your life every day. Except for the most part, <laughs> you are on the other side. There's marketing, there's selling, it's so good. You don't even know that it's happening, but you are party to it. Now imagine, if you can learn how to use these same skill sets, elements, and forces to benefit you and your family. Selling correctly is hard. It's very, very hard. But it's a worthwhile endeavor into jumping. So the number one reason that you should learn how to sell is it will improve your future. Say you totally suck ass right now on learning how to sell. Can't do it, or you just ooh, all afraid, or don't want to approach people. That's now. But if you start educating yourself on the sales process, your future will be brighter. You will make more money. You will be happier. And your sex life will improve. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean my sex life's going to improve? When you have more money, you have more options. And that's all I'm going to say on that. But one of the things that you should really look at is why are you afraid of selling? What is the big problem? What do you need to do that's going to make things easier and better for you and your family? First thing you need to do to learn how to sell, it's fall in love with your product. I used to sell cars long, long, long time ago. I used to sell Dodges and Chrysler's at Union Chrysler Plymouth or something like that. And the dealership doesn't exist anymore. It was a struggle. It was a struggle. Then I started selling BMWs. Same person same abilities but I sold more because I love the car if you have a problem selling something you, you gotta think about what's the big problem what's really the issue is it you or is it the product number two you gotta think about what people really want I say this all of the time in terms of dating mating hooking up that many guys will approach women with what they think the woman wants with little regard to what she really wants. And sometimes they don't know or sometimes they do know and they don't they won't tell you because then they'll be captivated. This takes a studying of body language, psychology and experience. But once you figure it out, it's amazing what you're able to pull off. Same thing selling a product to a customer. Everyone has these hidden barriers. Everyone has these fears of making the wrong decision. So for you to be a better salesperson, you have to isolate, identify, and address those issues. Number three, selling is not a bad profession. This is something that I get all the time. Oh, you're trying to sell me something. You, you see it here all the time on YouTube. It's like, I just want you to work hard, make good content, Help me out, and if you try to charge me some money, you're scamming me, man. You're just trying to get my money. You don't care about me. So what if I want you to work 15 hours a week, 20, 30 hours a week making your videos so you can benefit me? I, you have my undying gratitude. Now, I will go out and blow 100 bucks on some bullshit and won't think twice about it, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> These are the things that people do. Get this book, and I mentioned it before, Predictably Irrational by Dan Early. You can get it on Amazon. You can get the use. Get it. It'll help you in your sales education. Another thing, sales education is a never-ending lesson. 
the things that I learned in early 2000, then 2000, it changes or it involves or it becomes a little bit more enhanced. So you can never stop learning. You still have to put yourself out there and work really hard learning the process and having a better idea of what you should be selling, how you should be selling, and who should you sell to. There are many people that try to sell something, but they miss a very critical step. Who are you selling to? And why should they buy your product? I offer a course, Online B-School, to help people learn how to make money selling items or selling themselves or creating awareness online. I know who's my customer, fully 30% of the country. But if you drill it down, it is people between the ages of 25 and 45 who are seeking A, extra income first, B, full income. And it makes sense because how do you go from making no money to some money when you've never done it before? So once you learn who you should be selling to, and why you should be selling it to them, the selling process becomes much, much easier. That's the big conundrum because this is what people do. They make a product, service, write a book, do all of this stuff, and then after it's done, and they think that they're selling to the public or their customer base what they want, and they put it out there, and then Customers are like, eh, I don't like it. Now what happened? They didn't do their due diligence. They didn't do any research. They just slapped together a piece of product or put together something and wonder why it doesn't sell. What you have to do is really, really drive home who is your customer. This channel is designed for men. The rough talk, the way that I think, but there are many women growing number every day who come to the channel, they get the videos, they buy products, and they learn because I never changed my message to suit women, and I never will, but my message penetrates some women because they want to have a better life. Once again, I didn't change what I was doing. I have a mission. I have a purpose. I know where I want this thing to go and it carries through. So with that, you got to have a mission. You got to have some principles. You have to have a moral compass, some kind of guiding light when you're putting together your sales process, because the big thing is I just want to make some money, Glendon. I just want to make some money. I don't have time to read books. I don't want to work on my inner game. I just want to get paid. That attitude is full of fuckery. And this is why there is no introspection. There's no research. There's no self-education. There's no continuing education. And people who do this tend to be stuck. They'll get to a certain point and they'll never get past it. And they'll work harder. They'll put in more hours and they'll, and it's just like, it's just not working out. Maybe this isn't for me. That's not the problem. The problem is you haven't done the proper things, which is educate yourself. I was listening to this tape from Brian Tracy years ago, and he had a very good number. Take 5% of your income for personal development and self-education. <clears throat> now, I'll be honest with you. I haven't done 5% of my income in personal development and self-education. It, it, it's Honestly, it's probably like maybe 2% or 1.5. And with that, it makes a remarkable difference. So if you can't do the 5%, if you can do 1%, it's going to make a difference. You'll be exposed to new ideals. You'll be exposed to new concepts. Once you put it together, you will have fun with it. I'll tell you a quick story. Years ago, I was selling office furniture and this is when I was working for a company. I had been listening to Brian Tracy, I had been listening to Earl Nightingale, Tommy Hopkins, and I would just literally put the CD in my CD player and whenever I went on a sales appointment, I would listen to that 
all the way over there. So I get into this sales presentation. There's three people there. The thing is, I don't know who's the decision maker. And that's a very, very vulnerable position to be in as a salesperson when you're going B2B. So I go in there and I start pitching. Immediately start pitching because if you ask who's the decision maker, a lot of times they won't tell you. They'll use their proxy. They've got their hand in their back and making their lips move. So I went in and I presented and then this is how I closed. And this is, this is what I did. If I give you everything you need and I answer all your questions, will you make a decision today? Simple. So I went through it, was there about an hour and a half. We went through everything and then I went to the first person because once again, remember, I did not know who the decision maker was. I, I was told a certain person was the decision maker, but listening to the tapes, I had almost like a sixth sense that it wasn't that person. So I'm pitching and then I go to person number one. Are you ready to make a decision? Are you ready to make a decision? Are you ready to make a decision? Blink, 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 blink. That was my decision maker. And at that point, I completely ignored this person and this person and then started saying, what are your concerns? And then he says, well, your company has a 50% deposit. I said, yep, yep, that's true. And our company has a policy of working on purchase orders. So we, we have conflict there. And at that point I said, no, we don't. If you make a purchase order now, and I take it to the owner of the company, because you're not moving for a year almost. And this is another thing with office furniture. You have to get in really early because if you get in after they sign the lease and they hire the movers, usually the furniture, IT decisions have been made well in advance because when they move in, they want to be open for business. And he said, you could do that. And I said, we can do that. So they go ahead and do the purchase order for 50%. I submit it to my guy, tell them that we're not going to start doing anything for many months. So we just submit the purchase order to the company. It goes through their accounting procedure. I send them invoices and we get our 50% was it four months before the job had to be started? Then I took, you know, and we, we had set everything up. I went and talked to the guy. I said, okay, we got the 50%. This is where we are. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. And then he's like, well, we've got some changes. I was like, what are you changes? He said, we need more furniture. No problem. <laughs> do another purchase order. We've got time. He does another purchase order, submit it, and it goes in. Now, what happened was, I was listening to Brian Tracy and he was talking about the more that you sell, the better you're going to become. So I created a micro situation of selling, selling, selling to this person, this person, this person, because I was pitching and I was talking really, really fast because I didn't know who the decision maker was. But when I finally hit up on the right clothes and he started blinking like a Christmas tree, I knew who he was. I knew who the guy was. And that's one of the big things about sales education the more you do it the better you become the more you get into it the more fun it becomes it's not this thing like oh i got to go sell somebody you start saying oh i'm going to help somebody when you see that what you're doing and what you're selling will benefit the customer it's not really selling it's just communication and talking to a person that you're helping out when you do that reframe and you get away from the oh I got to make them buy. Oh, I got to get them closed. And often I would meet with people in the office furniture thing, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times before a deal was done. Go in the showrooms. So online it's a little different, but there's certain immutable principles that don't change. You still have to know who the decision maker is. You still have to appeal to the sensibilities of the decision maker. What, what do they fear? What do they hope to gain out of the transaction? Once you figure those things out, selling is not hard. What's hard is readjusting your mind to the things that you should do to be a better salesperson. So that's why you should learn how to sell. And this is something else, and this is very, very true. Once you learn how to really sell, 
You never, ever have to worry about money again. You might be in a position that it's not paying what you want, but if you are a good salesperson with a proven track record, you can always get a job. Always. And it won't even be the formal interview process. If you come in the door recommended, it's really your resume is just a formality. You have to talk and, oh, when do I start? When you're in that type of position, selling is fun and getting sales jobs. When you start your own business, same thing happens. I remember reading in Inc. magazine about it's this guy, his wife, she writes for Inc. And they had this dairy farm. And when he was going out pitching to investors, she remember he came home and told her there was about four, four or five or six other people there pitching to these angels. And angels are people who invest at a smaller level than venture capitalists. And he said he asked for the money. He got the deal. And then the, the lady wrote about her husband and said the only reason, only person who got the money was the one that asked for it. So there's a different way that you ask. You know, there's the. Uh, the guerrilla tactics that sometimes I employ here on YouTube. And then there's there, there's a reason for that. If you take the online B-School, you'll know exactly why. There's all kinds of things that come into selling that will help you when you're not selling. It becomes a part of who you are. It becomes a part of how you view life. And the thing is, you look at the world totally different than other people. You have the ability to sense things, to get a feel, to understand human psychology. And I will tell you, the best natural salespeople have an innate understanding of psychology. They just feel, they just know how people operate. And that's a big, big part of sales. And that's how you're, you'll have more sex. Because if you notice, all of the guys who have that kind of bent, because you can have a guy or a woman in an organization who's a really good salesperson, but they're married or they have very strict views about relationships. So they don't use their sales power for that. Then you have other people who are just like, oh, this is like psh, shooting fish in a barrel. So it can improve your sex life. All right. So if you like the content, make sure that you go below, check out the books, pick out what's for you. And subscribe to The Hustler Mindset. And subscribe to the Hustler Mindset Project.com for some provocative, and I'm doing mean provocative, hustling insights. Now we're at the part of the video where I am making deals. And this is something that's fun. And this is the fun part of selling. I got the online B-School. Now, I have made a change with the online B-School. $1,000, one-time fee gets you in for life. Or three payments of $400. What I am going to do is operate on the invoice system. So if you are interested in the online B-School, I'll put information here. If you email my assistant, she will send you an invoice and we'll do six payments of $200 a month. That's if you want it. If you don't want it, I understand. If you want to pay the full price in full, that link will be here in the three payment option and the six payment option. And as always, don't tell the people in the comments. This is for people who watch the whole video, get to the end because you people are different. The folks who watch from the beginning to the end, and some of my videos are ridiculously long. And I have people who watch all of them and every one of them. And I love you all to death. But you're a different kind of person. You have the ability to focus. You have the ability to stay with something. There's people who watch half a video, then flick or watch a few seconds of flick because their attention spans are shot to hell. So you're a little different and you have a higher than average chance of being able to be your own boss because you can concentrate and you can focus. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.